that thing. So there are two types of skeleton uh, uh, systems are out there. The one is the, in which the, the skeleton is present outside the, the body. And that type of skeleton is called as the exoskeleton. And uh, you can recall uh, I, if you uh, ever uh, felt <laughs> cockroaches beneath your feet, the outer surface of the cockroach is quite hard. And that is because of the presence of an exoskeleton over it. And, this, uh, and some skeletons are present beneath the, beneath the muscles, beneath the flesh, within the body, and those are called as endoskeleton, like humans um, carry the endoskeleton. And they are made up of bones and, uh, and, and the cartilage. Uh, you can think that cartilage is a bone, but it's like a soft version of a bone. It's like a soft bone. And so they are made of bones and, and, and cartilage. They are pretty alive and they are pretty active and doing lots of job. And there are about 206 different types of bones present in humans. And I can recall Munna Bhai MBBS where it says that uh, 2006 bones are present in humans. The major primary job of the skeletal system is to support and protect the body. Uh, how it support the body, I'll, I'll show you because it can carry the weight of the body and uh, uh, it helps in, um, the, uh, in, in, in keeping the structures and especially it protects many critical organs, many important organs, especially if you can recall our brain is enclosed within the skull. Our brain is protected by the skull. And similarly, our lungs, our heart, and that is protected by our ribs, and they are called as the rib cage. So skeletal is not uh, skeletons or the bones. They are not only supporting our, our our bodies, but they are also protecting very critical organs present in our humans, present in human systems. They are also involved in homostasis as well. Homostasis is a kind of balance between different things. They are uh, storing the minerals. Uh, as well as they are uh, producing the most precious possessions of the body and that the blood cells. The blood cells are produced within the, within the bone marrow. Every bone Recording. is carrying like, uh, uh, you know, uh, a, a fleshy sort of thing present within the bones. And those uh, uh, semi-solid flesh, fleshy sort of stuff is creating all the blood cells we have having. So the blood cells are produced within the bones and from the material, and that material is called as the bone marrow. bone marrow, and that is the part of the bone which is involved in producing all the cells present in our blood. They, these cells are like very famous RBCs, the red blood cells, the WBCs, the white blood cells, and the cells of the immune system. Ji, Ms. Khan, aapka koi question, please. Sir, is bone marrow part of our skeletal system? Gee, bone marrow is, is the material present within the bones. But that material is not uh, uh, present uh, in, the, in the smaller bones, but comparatively in the bigger bones. For example, our thighs uh, and our, uh, our some, some bones of the chest and the arms, they do carry the bone marrow. But based uh, the answer of your question is that the things produced by the bone marrow, they are not part of the skeletal system. The skeletal system is primarily related to the bones. Okay? The bone marrow material that become part of the circulatory system or the blood system, not with the, with, with the support or with the protection things. Good question, Shabash. Now, what are the functions of the bones? They, the bones, uh, they protect the organs, as I told you. The rib protects heart and the lungs. They store different chemicals, including the minerals and the salts, particularly the calcium. And that is very important. Uh, the ladies, they do have more problem in accumulating the calcium in their bones as compared to the, to the males. That is why Abhne Sunawega, the, the ladies are usually asked to take uh, calcium in order to, to, to keep their bones healthy. 
uh, you need to understand that the uh, bone, the, uh, the structure of the bone uh, is uh, uh, created out of calcium, the salts of the calcium. Now, the calcium are deposited in the bones to create the bones, but at the same time, it is dissolved and the bo bones become brittle and weaker. This process is going on within our body 24 hours a day. But when we are young, when we are strong, when we are having good nutrients, we are having this proce process more than this one. Okay, so we are like accumulating bones. We are strengthening our bones more than the dissolution of the bones. So, but if the dissolution is more, the bones are like dissolved more than it is um, accumulated calcium. Uh, it is dissolving more calcium uh, uh, as compared to the accumulation of the calcium. In that case, this thing is called as osteoporosis. You have heard osteoporosis, something like that. Yeah, this is the term, yes. which is a disease indicating the weakening of the bone. So, and uh, I can tell you that this is like more prevalent in the ladies as compared to the male. So the solution for the, those things is to have a, a food or a diet with the high amount of calcium, particularly after Sunaga, they usually recommend to have uh, nutrients like um, the, the tablets containing calcium and different types of uh, um, food supplements carrying containing calcium for, for the ladies. And uh, one big thing that the bones are doing, they are, their, their role is, and their involvement uh, in the movement of the body. And that is a very precious thing. We can, we can walk, we can, you know, if this is the man, so the bones can help us to <clears throat> change our place, to change our location, help us in the locomotion. And last but not the least, the bones carry the bone marrow and they are producing the cells. And I can tell you, they're doing a wonderful job. They are transporting oxygen from one place to another. They are defending our body against the germs as well. So all these critical things are present within our, our bones. So this is one of uh, the depiction to understand that how different types of bones are present in our body. There are lots of bones present in our body, but we are not going to address all of these bones. I wish that we might be in the in the lab to have that lecture. That will be very interesting. I mean, we will be talking and you know sharing, and I can show you exactly the locations of the bones as well uh, using my face and my structures. And uh, but luckily, I, I'm sure you guys are you are good enough. So skull is like a collection of multiple bones. I can tell you, skull is a collection of multiple bones. So different bones fused together, they are fused and they're immobile and different bones, uh, they fuse together to make the skull. And it, the job of the skull is to protect the very precious thing present within the skull and that is called as the brain. And uh, there are other bones present on our, in our face, for example, the nose, and that is called as the nasal bone. And there are bones present on our cheeks and our, 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 our chin that is mandible somewhere here. And uh, they create uh, cheekbones. They create the face. And very famous, you might remember the jaw bones. They are here to create the jaws. So in addition to these, uh, the rib uh, has uh, have multiple bones they actually originated from the backbone. So if this is the backbone, for example, if this is the backbone, the ribs originated from the backbone and then creates a circle like this, like this. And when the, when the ribs originate from the backbones, they actually fuse a very strong structure over there right in the center of our chest. It's a very strong structure over there. It's not visible quite here but somewhere here, it's a very strong structure here. You can actually feel chest uh, strong structure ko feel kar sakte It actually, all the ribs fuse to that structure. It is um, called as sternum. It's very hard, very strong. Uh, up to open heart surgeries nahi hoti, but when the open heart surgeries was very famous, abhi both rarely hoti hai, they have to use the drill and the cutter to actually to cut down this place to reach the heart. It's a very strong bone over there. So these ribs actually originate from 
the, the vertebral column and then diffuses to the front side, uh, which is called as a ribs. Some of the ribs, they do not actually uh, complete their journey. They just originate and then they like um, just stayed there. I mean, in the, in the back, something like that. They sometimes they got broken more easily as compared to these uh, ribs. But the job of the ribs is to protect the important organs present uh, within this thing. This is called rib cage. They protect the heart and the lungs, other things. And then there is a very interesting one over there. It starts from our shoulder, from the shoulder, and it attaches themselves somewhere here in the neck. It's called clavicle. Isko, uh, isko bolte hai, urdu mein hansli ki haddi. Pachyo mein ye bohut weak hoti hai. And sometimes it is referred as a beauty bone as well. <laughs> it's somewhere here. Okay, it's a very weak bone. Uh, and it helps as it just as it to, to align the shoulders. Uh, that's it's not a very strong sort of bone. Our forearm or our hand or our arms or preferably they are called as forearms. They are made up of three bones. This is the humerus. This is the main bone, humerus. And then there are two bones over there. There are two bones over there. One is called as the ulna towards your little finger. And towards your thumb, that bone is called as the radius. So humerus, ulna, and radius, three bones constituting the arms. And then there are, uh, there are big bones present in our pelvic region, uh, which is also called as the hip bone. And uh, it's called as the pelvic girdle. It's also uh, created by fusing multiple bones together. It's a very strong bone. And that is the job. Its job is to, uh, to, to support the weight of the body. We usually sit uh, our, because of the strength present in, the, in this uh, pelvic girdle or the hip bones. And of course, there is a, a vertebral column, uh, ki haddi, or, uh, which, is which is acting, uh, it's, it's like an axle of, you know, our um, body ko, uh, to keep us um, in, a, in a vertical position. The vertebral column is very critical for that thing. But vertebral column also carry some part of uh, the central nervous system. Central nervous system, remember, it has two parts. The one is the brain, and the other is the spinal cord. The brain is present within the skull and the spinal cord is present within the vertebral cord. Similarly, our, uh, our hind limbs or our legs are made up of three bones. The first bone is, the, is here called as the femur, this one, the femur. Thigh bones, very strong, the strongest bone present in the body, femur. And then there is a knee and after that there are two bones over there in the same way. But here, these two bones are called as tibia and fibula. In the arms, they are called as ulna and the radius. Ulna and the radius. But in the, in the legs, they are called as tibia and fibula. Then some more sort of bones you should know, like wrist bones are there. There are multiple bones present in our wrist. Similarly, there are multiple bones present in our ankle. But they are not completely fused. They are loose, loosely connected. That is why we're able to move our wrist in all possible directions. And that is why we're able to move our uh, foot in different positions as well, because these small little bones are not uh, tightly compact or fused with each other. The bones present in the skull, they are actually, uh, you can say, they are quite fused and they cannot move. It's an immobile version. But here, the small bones, a lot of bones over there, and they make the ankle. There's a one little <laughs> interesting bone present in, on the knee. It actually covers the knee joint. It's a very interesting bone. It's a very, uh, I mean, you can say a complicated and difficult situation if this bone is not working or it is like uh, it, it was broken. If it is broken, it's called as a patella bone. So this bone is, um, is critical to protect the knee joint. And uh, the people like me or some skinny people, they can feel this bone and the movement of this bone more, more easily uh, on their legs. But the primary purpose of the, the bone is to protect the knee joint. When I sit fold out by in, in a folded position, so these, uh, this bone protects the, the, the joint. So there are different types of joints present in the skeletal system. Some joints are like this. I mean, this is which allows the movement in two dimensions, like our knee joint, like our elbow joint. They allow the movements in two dimensions and such a joint is called as the 
the hing joint. Such joints are called as the hing joint, which allows the movement in two dimensions, in two directions only. There are other joints which allow the movements in multiple directions, like the shoulder joint. Such joints are called as ball and socket joint. They are called as ball and socket joint. There is another uh, uh, other ball and socket joints present in our body. Pelvic girdle, it's a ball and socket joint here. We can move this thing in multiple directions. Uh, we can move our wrist in multiple directions. It's also a ball and socket joint. The knee is a ball and socket joint. We can move. But there are other joints which are fused and do not allow the movement in any direction, like the skull. So these joints allow the movements of bones in different direction. That is why we are able to move from one place to another. Ji Zaman, please. Uh, sir, we can move our head in a lot of different yeah, directions. Yeah. So what kind of... Good point. What kind that, of... Shabba, shabba. Good point. The head is moved because of the bones present here in the vertebral column. Okay? I'm talking about right, the sir. skull. The bones present in this. They are fused like this one. You cannot move this thing. Ji Muskan. Right, sir. So, what, which one is the weakest bone in our human body? Uh, the bones which I have told you right now, unme sabse weakest clavicle hai, which I have shared with you. Okay, but there are, there, is, there are bones which are very small, and, um, and of course, they are very small. They, are, they can be considered as weak as well. They are present in the ears, and they can be considered as the smallest and the weakest, something like that. Okay. Okay, sir. So, uh, 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 are called as atlas and axis. They are called as atlas and axis. And they are also called as yes and no bones. They are also called as yes and no bones. The atlas is responsible to move our head in the yes direction. When you say yes, this vertebral column is moved at that time. The axis, the other one, uh, is moved when, we, when you say no. Uh, so these two together allows uh, our head to move in, you know, in all possible direction. And then the bone is made up of uh, living things, living tissues, the connective tissues and the minerals. And over the period of time, minerals deposition increased and the bones, the mass become harder and harder. <clears throat> so the cells present in the bones are called as osteoblast cells. And uh, they produce uh, minerals. And when the mineral get deposited, they become very hard and eventually become like bony structure. Some bones are uh, not uh, always uh, very hard in structure. They are like they are called as spongy bone, <clears throat> and um, like it is like hard version of the bone, very hardest part of the bone, and then it is like some less hardy, less uh, hard part of the or comparatively softer part of the bone. It's called a spongy bone. Bones actually grow in this way. If you eat chicken, you can sense, you can feel the uh, hardest bone and then there is a, a, a part of the bone which you can actually eat, which you can actually chew. And that was a spongy part of the bone. And um, some bones have uh, no, uh, they're very compact. There is no open space. There is nothing present between the bones. No hollow space is there. Uh, no bone marrow is there as well. So there are bone marrow, which is of two types, uh, red marrow and the yellow marrow. The red uh, ma uh, marrow is uh, the place where red and white uh, blood cells are produced, they are synthesized. The yellow marrow is the part of the bone which stores the fat. So if uh, the person is not metabolizing its fats a lot, that fat will ultimately stored within the muscles or within the bone. The, if the bone become uh, more fatty, it, it looks yellow, and that is why it is called as the yellow marrow. 
Okay, so this is a, a, a good picture to understand whatever we have talked about. So the so hardest part of the bone, and then there is a strong structure, which you can see a white part of the bone, and that is a compact part of the bone. And then there is comparatively softer part of the bone called the spongy bone. And the, and the material present within the bone called as the bone marrow. And we know all the things present over there. Of course, the bones are connected with the blood vessels. And that's because they are living, there are, they are cells present within the bones which require uh, food and oxygen. So it must be supplied through the blood capillaries. Some part of the bones are very, uh, you know, soft and soft and they're called cartilage bone. And that is uh, more or less like a very soft version of the bone, like ear bones are completely cartilage bone. You can move ears move your ears, bend your ears. And chicken is a feel of cartilage part. It is called in Urdu, which can be chewed. So during development, most of the bones, they are soft, but uh, over the period of time, due to the accumulation of salts, they become hard and, and compact. Uh, it initiates uh, as a flexible tissue, which is called as the cartilage. But over the period of time, that cartilage is replaced eventually by the strong version or the compact bone. Uh, when we grow, the bone size also grow with us. And that is a definition of our general or overall growth of the body. During childhood, most of the bones, they are, they, uh, the bones are very weak or we can say very softer. And over the period of time, it becomes um, from the cartilage into a hard version of the bones. And uh, it usually push, uh, the bones are kept on growing uh, over the, and it increases our height. It increases the uh, length of our arms and the legs as well. The bones are um, itself very strong and they're very hard, but still the bones are connected with each other. And whenever the bones are connected, uh, uh, this connection is called as the joint. So this is a depiction of uh, the elbow joint where two bones, if you can recall, this is called humerus. And there are two bones over there, ulna and the radius. So when these the bones connect with a place called the elbow joint, so wherever the bones connect, it is called as the joint. This allows the movement of the bones in different directions. And uh, that is why we are able to move our skeleton. Some bones, are, some joints are immovable, like present in the skull, they're fixed joints. Other joints you can move in uh, either multiple directions or in only two directions. Like shoulder, you can uh, uh, move uh, in all possible directions. So based on the directions of the movement, some joints, uh, uh, they are classified into uh, different categories. The hinge joints allow the movement in only two, two uh, dimensions, the ball and socket joints where are you allowed to move uh, the bones in more than two dimensions? And then there are sliding joints. Uh, uh, I don't know for the time being an example, okay? Sorry about this. Okay, here is the example. Thank you very much, the slide. <laughs> I just, I was trying to figure out the, the sliding joints are there, uh, which allows the the movement of the bones which allows the slide movement of the bones they can slide on each other like in the wrist bones and that allows the movement in, in i think it's very flexible we can maneuver the bones at the gliding joints in almost every possible directions in ball and socket joints like uh, the shoulder joint we can um, move in more than two dimensions and in the hinge joint we can only move the bones in only two dimensions. The example of the hink joint is uh, elbow joint. Uh, the example is uh, the knee joint. And the album uh, example of the ball and socket joints are the shoulders. And for the gliding is the uh, uh, ankle bones as well as the wrist bones. Okay, and um, joints usually uh, placed under quite a lot of stress because of actions, because of our jobs, because of our doing things movement, and they're usually prone to have lots of beer and tear as well. And uh, joints, actually, they connect with each other for this bone, and there's another bone. There is a soft stuff present which can connect and keep those bones together. 
this is called as the ligament so uh, uh, they are strong elastic bands of connective tissue and they connect the bones um, in uh, in the joint sometimes uh, because of the injury the ligaments got damaged as well and that actually caused a lot of pain in the joint uh, in case of injuries or in because of aging as well okay so cartilage is also covers the ends of the many bones so that uh, the joint can move freely frankly with each other so they, so, so they do not show a lot of resistance it's like a cushion to the bones so when something bad happens to the bone like the fracture they they become broken but there is a natural tendency of uh, fixing this thing so the, most of the doctors they are not fixing the the bones they are trying to put the bones in place or days you know we have a lot of technology we put the plates and we put the things over there and put them together and then screw them we just need to put the bones at right place the rest of the job is done by our own body it actually create and fix and chemical produce chemicals and the salts and then fix the bones over a certain period of time wo jo aapne jara log sune hain the people jo non medical non doctor type log hote hain jo haddiyan theek karte hain their job is just to place the bones at the right uh, you know at the right direction and then naturally it will become um, grown up to a normal but if the bones are not placed at the right direction they will become tilted and uh, they can cause deformities as well sometimes the joints they got dislocated it happens uh, when the socket the bone uh, loses its place from the socket and uh, sometimes we feel strain and that usually happens when the ligaments are overstretched or torn is a pair mud jata hai ya jab jo is tarah ki injury ho jati hai osteoporosis ke bare mein bhai it's a problem of the bone density when bone density decreases when losing more calcium and that is a, a disease which usually occur in the ladies bones become weaker and weaker another very um, serious type of disease for the bones is called arthritis and in this case the bones become more stiff and difficult to move the joints are not flexible and the bones may swell as well another disease when the bones accumulating uric acid and that is called as the gout and uh, the primary health or the the healthier bone uh, is related to having a healthy diet and the healthy food okay so so that's it from the for the for the lecture and the, before i conclude Uh, I I'll take your questions, guys. After in the next session, I request you guys to please type your name and ID before we will we conclude this session. Okay, please type your name and ID now. And once we are done, please uh, reconnect and then come back to have a question and answer session. I'm skip. and do talk with each other to find out a possibility of having an on camera class okay i want you to see you guys yaar hum log ek class ki tarah pad sakte hain just try to convince your class next time to